It's going to be a fun couple days. I'm in the car right now. I'm heading about six hours south to Gravenhurst to the Swift Company to pick up my new canoe. And then I'm going to Sean's place. Going to my self-reliance cabin, meet up with Doug and Sean, and we are going fishing. So I'm going to break it up into two videos. Today's video is just going to be the vloggy type 10 minute long video. You can stick with me if you want to see that kind of stuff. Oh, what's that? That's a 12.6 and old Joe farm. Look at that. Look at these beauties. Joe's here. Seen you around there. Hey, buddy, where? How's it going? Good to see you, man. See you, man. Welcome. Thank you. All right, so this is the new pack boat. We're gonna let old Scotty give us a rundown on it. Scott works here at Swift. He's been here for quite a while. He's a big man on campus over here. Long enough. Long <laughs> enough. All right. So yeah, we'll give you the rundown on Joe's new whip for the season. So this is the new Cruiser 14.8. So we started designing a new pack boat series last year. We started with a bigger version, then we did a smaller version, and then we did the medium version. This is the medium version. So Joe and I were talking. He's got Tripper now. He said, you know, I need a little bit more boat so I can fit Tripper. I can fit my gear. You know, what are you guys working on? This boat we were already kind of prototyping. Uh, David Yost had already kind of made the, the rough outline of it. Um, and when we design a boat, David Yost literally makes the first version out of wood. So the original prototype of every boat we make is uh, made out of generally cedar uh, or even pine. And so that's around that time uh, he designed the prototype. We went and paddled it. You may have seen some of that on social. We loved the boat. Uh, it's a great size. That's it's the one good. you brought up to my place and we yes. paddled in the uh, ice water. <laughs> yes, if you ever check that out on any of our socials, that was uh, the most adventurous test paddle I think we've ever done. I've seen better weather for that, but you were a good sport, so I appreciate that. Um, and we ended up with this. So we loved the boat. Um, everything about it lined up. We put it into production uh, and right around that time it was getting to be close to spring. Joe needed his new ride. So here we are. So Joe and I talked about colors, uh, maybe a new scheme, something to mix it up, give you something that nobody else has. So this is what we did. So this boat is 100% carbon fiber. Carbon fiber hull, carbon fiber gunnels, carbon fiber parts. And we did it with this cool material which is called Carbon de Negra. Uh, H weave, uh, H weave being the term. If you look really closely, it kind of looks like little H's. And this is a newer material that's got a lot of properties similar to Kevlar, uh, similar weight, similar uh, abrasion resistance, all those things. Looks really cool, nice and strong, nice and light, and it opens us to doing some cool color schemes as well. So we don't normally do this, but Joe and I were talking about colors. And he said, oh, check this out. Let's do it in orange on the oh, bottom. Oh, man. I love it, dude. So we uh, slipped the logo on the bottom for you. That's in there, too. Eh? You were saying that's not a decal. Yeah, this is not a decal. This is literally built in the boat. So when you make one of these uh, composite boats, literally the first thing you do, you have a, a boat mold, an empty boat mold, and you literally paint that mold. So the first thing you do is you put in your orange paint. So we put that in with a little cutout to do the Scout logo. Then you lay in your layers, then you pull through all your resin, and what you end up with at the end is this really cool lightweight boat with a built-in logo. How much do you think this guy weighs? 
this guy, you'd be just under 30 pounds. Your current boat is 25. Uh, this one's a little bit longer. We've got uh, an additional 14 inches of right. length compared to your current one. Yep. Um, so, and then with the, you know, we put uh, the fishing package on it. Oh, yes. Uh, your GoPro mounts, we got all this decked out for you. So These guys here, right? Yep. A couple grams here, a couple grams there. Yep. Gram we <laughs> it counts. <laughs> yeah. Put that right on the bow there so you can catch Tripper hanging out in front of the boat. Nice. And uh, just add water. Just add water. We got lots of that. So um, the yoke is, is is different on this one? Yes. So your older boats, we we like to tinker with new ideas. We're really big on R&D, new designs, new styles. Uh, one of the things we'd heard with some of the older yokes, and it's been brought to our attention, is that they can slip off uh, depending on the fit. Not always, but sometimes if you give it a good pop, um, it can do I that. I personally, ne I, liked, I never really had too much of a problem, but I did hear a lot of that comments and stuff from yep. other people too. Yeah, so just in light of that, yep. we decided, well, let's actually secure it right to the boat. Yeah. Um, then essentially, you know, your failure rate is zero. So what we did is every boat comes with these holes drilled out and an insert put right into the gunnel. And then when you screw your yoke in, it's right in the balance point. You don't have to find that balance point. Right. It's Sometimes just... guys put a boat up and it's back heavy and yep. when it goes back. You don't that was my biggest that. problem. Finding the same spot every single time was my biggest problem. Exactly, yeah. So we eliminated that, um, put it right into the boat. Everything's secure, no wiggle, um, lightweight carbon fiber, and uh, you're ready to hit the back country. Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, new seat for this year as well. Oh, right. yeah? Yeah. Oh, so, the high back. Yeah, so high back seat with lumbar. We changed the material that we make them out of. Um, it's like a quick dry. It is very. You can tell. Fabric. Yeah, dude, you like it. It's thicker than the old ones. Breathes better. Doesn't hold heat, um, and it kind of molds to you. Yeah, I don't want no butt sweat. <laughs> Nobody likes butt sweat. <laughs> and then uh, nice and flexy in the back. So as you're paddling, the seat will move She's with you move. a little bit. Yeah. So if you do wear your life jacket, which That's... you should, and Joe does, um, it's a little bit easier on you. You don't have that kind of grating into your back as you go. This is completely different. The way this, this bends is 100% different yeah, than my old. Yeah, the old ones were way stiffer. Very um, stiff. With a, yeah, with just a different type of plastic insert. So nice. thickened it up, um, you know, made it a little bit more malleable that way. Uh, and I think you guys will find too, if you spend a few hours with this boat, as you always do, um, you're not gonna notice that. It's not gonna bug you, stay a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're on the fish or something and don't want to get out of the boat. Yeah, that happens so often for me. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. So uh, you're you're pretty much good to go. The other thing about this boat, if you look down, yeah, wow, are these sucked-in gunnels? Uh huh. So this is a classic feature of C1 racing canoes. Uh, the objective being is that when you're paddling a boat, your paddle is going by this area of the hull. Oh, okay. If the boat is widened out at that part, you may have to yep. bend, stretch, yep. go farther. You're not to getting get as much water. oomph, really. Exactly. This allows you that when you're in the boat, the boat is closer to you, you're more secure with it, you don't have that reach, so you can get a more powerful stroke, stroke at a faster rate. Again, just a, an, in, an increase in efficiency right. uh, yeah. is really the objective. Uh, and you'll find that too, compared to the old ones, I hate to say old ones, but your current boat has a very flared hull, which means it goes straight up and out. This boat has a very uh, a lot of tumble home. The which tumble home is crazy on this one. Is the curl. Yeah. So what that does is, you know, the gunnel is actually inside the yeah, width of the boat. Definitely. So easier to reach over. It's going to make it seem a little bit narrower when you're in it. You've got the suck here so that when you're doing that reach, you don't have to really extend. Um, and again, more comfort, more efficiency, um, cover more miles. Um, so let's figure out what you need, Joe. There's uh, all sorts of options here. Take one of those and one of those <laughs> and one of those. Two of these, three of these. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a pick out a paddle now. Probably get another 240 Camano. Oh, hello, sir. Hey, man. Look who's here. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, long time. Yeah, how you been? Good. You? Yeah, I'm all right. Good. <laughs> Looking forward to fishing. Yeah, actually, L3 was dog free weekend fishing. Oh, I actually brought trippers in the car. Oh, is he? No. <laughs> well, that's okay. I'll have to. Uh... You guys are in a tight little set of rapids. I needed to zigzag your way through something, you'd be, you're in the better boat for that. I didn't um, actually do much like actual normal solo paddling with it because of the seat position, I guess. Yep. But I might try that uh, today or tomorrow. Because they were new to it and they won't put that 
Well, that's it, if you want to keep up too, when you don't really have a choice, right? Yeah. Mike's going to be here. Oh, okay, great, thanks. The yolk on it? Looks good on there, Scott. Yeah, buddy. Got <laughs> <laughs> love it. I know, man. Cool. I got these um, badass hooks here. Oh, so yeah. It makes it all easy. Remember before on my stupid Jeep, we had to install it? Oh, the... dude, yeah, that got way out of hand. <laughs> I'm still recording. How do I stop? Oh, cool. We'll see. We might have to modify this. Well, last time, didn't we have a little extra hoop? Well, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about with the modifications. I do have that loop, but I just don't know if we need it. Right. Because now you got this honking ridiculous... What do you mean? <laughs> that's not that big. A winch that could pull a tank out of the mud. <laughs> Joe needs it. Well, yeah, you, knowing you, yeah, you do. And this probably came out of your emergency stash, if I were the to... The paracord? No. Yeah. No? Yeah, of course. No, of course. Canadian Jam, not my license plate onto my truck. <laughs> All right, well that was pretty cool. Timing worked out perfect. Sean rolled up, got the, uh, the little boat on the car. Everything's good. Sean and I are gonna go out for dinner. Doug's coming up soon. Um, I'm spending the night in a hotel because I need to have a shower in the morning. It's not an option, I have to do it. So yeah, Doug's not up yet. Sean and I are gonna go have a nice dinner together and then we'll part ways and then I'll meet back up with those guys tomorrow morning. So we're just gonna drive now into Gravenhurst and get some food, because I'm famished. Just parched as well. Well, that was fun. That was a nice little catch up with Sean. Had some good food. So I'm just going to head to a hotel and do some research and work on my uh, editing and my emails and all that fun stuff. It's not got too much time before uh, it's bedtime tonight. So I'll be catching up with those guys in the morning and doing some nice, some nice fishing as opposed to some bad fishing, hopefully. So I hope you guys enjoy this little vloggy type video. It's just a little bit different from me, but the full experience tomorrow will happen and I'll get you guys on uh, coming along with me for that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. -bye.